me in the studio is security consultant Roy Ohidiebe. Good morning. Thank you Good for morning. joining us in TVC yeah, it's Breakfast. A I wonder what came to mind when you got uh, this, uh, when you saw this uh, message by the Chief of Army staff saying that uh, uh, the war against insurgency in Nigeria will soon come to a successful end. You would recall that some time ago, uh, the former Chief of Army staff, I think, said that it would take us about over 20 years to deal with this. But this new Chief of Army staff is saying that it will soon come to a successful end and that we do not need any form of uh, help. What do you make of it? Well, thank you for this opportunity. I would like to say that um, it's a political statement and mm, it has no so. basis to be made. Really? Now, if you want to look at the war on insurgency over the years and the global perspective on insurgency and the opportunities in the Sahel right now, and also the global opportunities to move arms and um, the, the, the lockdown in so many countries too. You know, if you look at the inconsistency in our political environment, the failure of governance, okay, and our data paucity, our enlargement on our unpoliced areas, and you want to make such a statement. So it's unfortunate that he just came on board and is making such a statement because it does not hold any basis if you want to view at the parameters that could But he call is at hold. the center He's of not at this. the center. The military is at the front. Hmm. When you move forward and you dissipate the insurgents and you decamp them, they permit into the society. The DSS, the immigration, and all other agencies, the police, they have a role to play. They build up cells again. They hold guns in non-police areas and hoist flags and start another insurgency and bastardizing of the people and the populace. So how can you, as a military, make such a singular statement when the war on insurgency is an agency frontal? Hmm. So from, from the look of things now, there has to be some sub level of collaboration because uh, if you are saying that they are the center, those uh, are seemingly within that are supposed to ensure that the work they at the, uh, the front are doing is ensure that uh, there's nothing reoccurs, so to speak. There's seemingly some gaps, obviously, from what you're saying. Major gaps. Now, listen to me. If we have a baby, right. the baby has to grow to an adult before it can begin to express potentials. Now, if you have insurgency, definitely they build cells, they penetrate, they grow their population by recruiting people radicalizing their mentality. So whose responsibility? Is Can that? the military fight a, a, a negative education? No. It is, part of it is the orientation agency in Nigeria. Part of it is the DSS. To actually know when persons are meeting in places that they are and not we supposed are not to meet. Ex exploiting yeah. this. Then they move money too. Right. So what financial system do you have? Then they cross borders. What immigration customs system do you have border control system do you have then they move in on police areas they bear arms and they collect taxes from people what policing system do you have to cop that then as the military you just come and say can your dad wake up and say nobody should laugh in this house he won't go to sleep he will it is when there is noise and rowdiness that he comes out as the dad but there are other persons, the mom, the elder brothers, that should take some roles. If you negate their responsibilities and make such statements, you are beginning to send negative vibes to the constitutional adherence we need to do for collaboration and synergy. Now you are telling them you are in line, you are in charge. It's wrong. He should withdraw that statement. Really? Yeah. So, so are you also of the opinion that we do not need uh, some help? Because he's saying that we do not need... Uh, uh, mercenaries coming to help Nigeria. Well, if, if it's a homegrown challenge, you may say you don't need the help. This is a global challenge. And the, the ability of the sergeant, Boko Haram or whatever, it grows beyond your borders. They need, they need weapons, they need funding, they need some kind of technological backup, they need information, intelligence, which they grow outside of Nigeria also. So you need international collaboration. So if you say you don't need any help, any help, I think that anyway, as Nigeria, we will hear tomorrow that he will come out and say he was quoted out of contest. So why must people speak? 
the honorable this and that head of nsa and all of them are just making statements we don't need statements we need action there are so many things we need to see that is happening we will tell ourselves that is this agency that is working we will know that you are working then you hand over to the police the judiciary let the correctional system run let the criminal justice system run then we'll begin to understand that you are working. People will give you accolades. The Assembly, National Assembly, will invite you to accommodate and appreciate what you are doing. You don't need to make statements. We don't need statements from you. It's action. Perhaps it's to generate some level of confidence uh, on the military, seeing that they are at the front, forefront of, of this battle. The confidence the military needs is training. By the time I am, I'm, I'm an ex-military man. Absolutely. So by the time I am in the right training, propagated towards accommodating the threat I see before me. By the time I'm equipped properly, by the time I'm motivated properly, by the time I'm at the front line, my wife don't need to call me, my children don't need to call me, they want to buy Panadol, they want to buy vaccine for their ailments. By the time I'm at the front line, and I see that judicial process is taken for those we apprehend in the act of committing crime, and they are not being directorialized in, in Plendo, then I will begin to be focused and deliver all loyalty that is expected of me for my country. Mm. That is what is expected. So these areas that you have mentioned, especially the aspect of uh, the criminal justice system, which a lot of persons have called for uh, some level of uh, reformation, especially to address issues such as this. The, what more do you think has to be done that will perhaps speed up the results we need to see with regard to this fight against insurgents? Well, we, I was happy when I heard that um, the the prisons have been changed to the criminal justice system. Once upon a Correctional time... Correctional system. Okay, thank you very much. Once upon a time, we had the Nigerian police force. Now, it was changed to the Nigerian police. Yes. So, if the correctional system has been changed, it is to correct the negatives that I have. It's not to bastardize my name. There are so many people that have gone through the correctional system. They come out. They become ambassadors. They can run businesses and all that. They have a certificate mm -hmm. of exit. And that certificate carries that they behaved properly. They have served their term. So all of these deradicalized catchment of people, why don't you take them through the correctional center? Why don't you impute all of these finances, attention, that you use to deradicalize people? Put it there, and it should encompass other inmates. It's not only them. These people were caught for armed robbery. These guys were caught for kidnapping. These guys were caught for illegal mining. These guys were caught for terrorism. Anyone that is not going for firing squad or electrocution or hanging, then you know he's serving a term and he will exit to join the society. Then he must be processed through the channels, the chambers of the uh, exit plan. And when he comes out, say, oh, I was this, I was that. I was forced into terrorism. They abducted my village. But I joined them. But the government has helped me. But you can't separate a certain set of people and you say these criminals are going to be de-radicalized. Then these criminals are going into a correctional center. Then who is funding this and who is funding this? The correctional center, didn't you see people jumping out of the fence during the NSAS, how can we have a place that is supposed to seclude criminals from us yeah, and put them in the right perspective and they could just scale out like that? What kind of perimeter fencing, defensive system? Yeah, what do we have? Now, earlier, quickly, before we let you go, you mentioned uh, some gaps that had to be addressed, especially when it comes to uh, interagency collaboration to address this issue. How do we build on that to get results? Well, um, you see so many security um, practitioners, senior men in the industry that have been coming out to speak on the media, they are presently embarrassed. We are all embarrassed. Why? So many of us left the agencies. So definitely, we have seen that there are opportunities to build a strong cohesion if you have the head of agencies have a rapport pattern. And if there is trust, the, the breakdown of trust is one of the key dilapidators. And it has not helped the agency heads to really collaborate. I could tell you something today. Mm. And you go and say it somewhere else where you are not supposed to say it. And it will be construed for something else. And I'm, I'm sacked or I'm demoted because of what I told you. Then the next man taking my seat is already giving you a distance. 
So there should be trust. They should respect each other's space and responsibility. Very important. Security consultant, Royal Kiliabe, thank you for your time on the program. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.